A compelling theory for the origin of the human species is still lacking in paleoanthropology, but a review of early humans' evolutionary history suggests that the anatomical, physiological, and behavioral characteristics that have long been used to identify our genus did not develop all at once, but rather over the course of about a million years in three different lineages, with some characteristics evolving earlier and others later. In any case, it has become increasingly evident with more data that the history of our genus is still unknown. Nonetheless, Homo ergaster was the first of our ancestors to resemble modern humans in appearance. These people were typically tall and lean, and they might also have had little to no hair. Some people still prefer to refer to this species as African Homo erectus, which is not universally accepted. Indeed, the extinct archaic human species or subspecies known as Homo ergaster lived in Africa during the early Pleistocene. The debate in paleoanthropology over whether Homo ergaster should be considered a separate species, or part of Homo erectus is still open. The terms, African Homo erectus or Homo erectus ergaster, are frequently used by supporters of synonymization, to refer to Homo ergaster. The name, which means, working man, roughly, refers to the more sophisticated tools that the species uses in comparison to its ancestors. We typically associate our genus with East Africa because of the vast number and significance of findings at various locations in the Great Rift Valley. This vast region extends from the Afar Triangle in the northeastern Horn of Africa, through the Lake Turkana Basin, where it divides into an eastern and a western branch, and all the way to Malawi. The Homo ergaster fossil record primarily spans the time from 1.7 to 1.4 million years ago, though a wider time span may be possible. While Homo ergaster fossils have been discovered along the shores of Lake Turkana in Kenya, they have also been discovered in other parts of East and Southern Africa. It is not clear whether later African fossils, some dating from less than a million years ago, can be formally recognized as Homo ergaster specimens, but they do indicate long-term anatomical continuity. When new lineages of humans emerged in Africa 600,000 years ago, Homo ergaster may have continued to exist as a chrono species. There isn't enough of a difference between Homo ergaster and Homo erectus, according to those who think the two should be considered one species. Arguments in favor of keeping the two species separate include the morphological distinctions between Homo erectus fossils from Asia and Africa, as well as the fact that early human evolution was more nuanced than implied by the inclusion of multiple species. Furthermore, morphological variations among the individuals typically considered to make up Homo ergaster may indicate that this species is not a cohesive one. Whatever the most accurate classification, this species exhibits early forms of traits later expressed in Homo erectus, and as such, they are probably the immediate ancestors of later populations of Homo erectus in Asia. In addition, Homo ergaster is most likely the ancestor of Neanderthals and modern humans, two later hominin species that lived in Europe and Africa. Homo ergaster differs from Australopithecines and earlier and more primitive species of humans like Homo habilis and Homo rudolfensis, in a number of ways. They differ from earlier and contemporary hominins in terms of their larger body mass, relatively long legs, obligate bipedalism, relatively small jaws and teeth, which indicate a significant change in diet and body proportions. Some researchers believe Homo ergaster to be the earliest true representative of the genus based on these characteristics. The fossil KNMWT 15,000, a nearly complete skeleton of a young hominin who lived 1.5 to 1.6 million years ago, is known as Turkana boy, but also known as Nariokotone boy. The skeleton of this early hominin is the most complete one ever discovered. He was found in Kenya, close to Lake Turkana, on the Nariokotone River's bank. The hominin's age at death is believed to have been between 7 and 11 years old. Because early hominins are thought to have lived in cooler climates and were thought to have led a less active lifestyle than, supposedly hairless, post ergaster species, it is likely that they needed thick body hair to stay warm. This is similar to modern non-human apes. Homo ergaster lived in Africa's savanna, a special environment with difficulties that would have required a great deal of novel and unusual behaviors. Like modern primates, earlier humans probably used counterattack strategies to fend off predators. This behavior most likely led to the evolution of true hunter-gatherer behavior by the time of this species, a first among primates. This species was an apex predator other behaviors, such as male-female foraging division and true monogamous pair bonds, 
may have first emerged in Homo ergaster. The emergence of more sophisticated Acheulean tools, such as the earliest known hand axes, coincides with the emergence of the species. This species may have been the first hominin to master the use of fire, though conclusive evidence is lacking. It is generally accepted that early humans' diets contained more meat than Australopithecus did, which contributed to brain development. The two main theories for this are that either meat caused the large and calorie-expensive ape gut to shrink in size, allowing this energy to be diverted to brain growth, or meat is energy, and nutrient-rich, and put evolutionary pressure on developing enhanced cognitive skills to facilitate strategic scavenging and monopolize fresh carcasses. Alternatively, it is also proposed that early humans relied primarily on underground storage organs, like tubers, and food sharing, which aided in social bonding among both male and female group members, in a drying climate with scarcer food options. Contrary to what is believed for Homo ergaster and later humans, short-statured early humans were probably incapable of endurance running and hunting, and this species long, Australopithecus-like forearm may suggest that early humans were still somewhat arboreal. Additionally, Homo ergaster is thought to be where organized hunting and gathering first appeared. Based on the evidence of the cervical vertebrae, Homo ergaster may have been the first hominid to use a human voice, a proto-language. No archaeological evidence exists, but given its highly developed brain and physical capabilities, it is possible that this species used symbolic thought. Homo erectus was once thought to have been the first hominin to leave Africa and settle in Europe and Asia. However, if Homo ergaster is different from Homo erectus, then this species would play this role. Because there are few early Pleistocene fossil hominins on either continent, it is unclear exactly when and which humans first appeared there. It is also unknown how exactly they expanded, with Homo ergaster being the most likely candidate. The discovery of Homo erectus fossils in East Asia proves that humans, most likely Homo ergaster, left Africa before one million years ago. Historically, it was thought that humans left Africa for the first time between 1.9 and 1.7 million years ago. But the idea that Homo ergaster was the first hominin to leave Africa is also called into question by discoveries made in China and Georgia, which moved the oldest possible date back further, to over 2 million years ago. A growing population periodically outgrowing their resource base is likely to have been the main driver of migration out of Africa with splintering groups eventually settling in nearby, uninhabited areas. Homo ergaster's physiology and advanced technology may have allowed them to colonize areas that had never been inhabited before. It is unclear whether this species was truly the first species to spread outside of Africa. Australopithecines had probably colonized the continent's savanna grasslands by three million years ago, and there are no obvious barriers to their ability to spread into Asia's grasslands. Although it is widely believed that hominins left the continent along the Nile Valley or across the southern end of the Red Sea, neither region in the early Pleistocene has been associated with fossilized hominins. The Dmanisai skulls from Georgia, which are 1.77 to 1.85 million years old and may represent early Homo ergaster, and Java man fossils, which lived more than 5,000 miles away, are two of the earliest human fossils found outside of Africa. However, there is some uncertainty surrounding the dating of important Asian Homo erectus specimens, including Java Man, but they are all most likely 1.5 million years old or younger. The tools recovered at Ubadia closely resemble earlier tools found in East Africa, making it the oldest firmly established site outside of Africa for Acheulean tools, one of the tool industries linked to Homo ergaster. The aforementioned Manasai skulls, which exhibit many characteristics in common with Homo ergaster in Africa, are the earliest fossil proof of humans in Asia. This suggests that early humans may have left Africa as early as 1.7 to 1.9 million years ago. The Dmanisai skulls exhibit a wide range of other characteristics in addition to those that are similar to those of Homo ergaster, some of which are similar to characteristics in earlier hominins. Additionally, the site noticeably lacks preserved hand axes, which are a characteristic of Homo ergaster, suggesting that hominins may have left Africa even earlier. The small volume of the brain case, the shape of the middle and upper face, and the absence of an external nose are three features that make the Dmanisai skull three stand out as being similar to Homo habilis. The variety of skulls found at Dmanisai raises the possibility that Homo ergaster should be defined to include fossils that would, 
normally be attributed to Homo habilis, or that two distinct species of archaic humans split off from Africa at an early date. In addition to the Dmanisai fossils, stone tools made by hominins that date to 2.12 million years ago were found in China, indicating that they left Africa earlier than that. The notion that Homo erectus in particular, originated in Asia and then spread back into Africa has occasionally surfaced, despite the fact that earlier humans and Australopithecines were discovered in Africa, which significantly undermines the theory that Homo erectus originated in Asia before migrating back to Africa.